This is Idiots with Opinions. Idiots may vary. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's a dark and stormy night, and that means it's time for Idiots with Opinions. That's where we're going to insert a, a song. No, we're but not. probably we not. We don't have the money for that. No, probably not. Nor the musical talent. I mean, you know, one of us can play the guitar, and it's certainly not me. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, I, I might be able to sing along. No. To a certain degree. No one can sing along ever. It's because impossible. it's got to be a... Our theme song is not that. Well, yeah, it's certainly not going to be that. Anyway, my name's Tuscan. Is it? I think so. What's my name? I think it's Todd. Yeah, that sounds about right. I, if, if my if I've been informed correctly, which I rarely am, right? Especially when I'm making important decisions, I'm very rarely working with all the information that I could possibly be working with. That yeah. sounds like you'd be perfect for this show that I'm doing. Exactly. My friend and I are doing a show. It's called Idiots with Opinions. Wait, wait, you're my friend. I'm on that. <laughs> wait, we're doing that now. Is that so? That's live my right Lord. now. I don't know about live. It's live. From yeah. New York, Saturday night. It's, I think it's Friday night. Is it it Friday doesn't. Night? It doesn't matter because I've they're gonna hear this on a completely different day because this is still in the testing stages. I have completely lost track of time. Time is a social construct. Well, it's a it's a man made construct. Can I don't you know about social? Can you tell I go to art school? Yes. Really? Just by looking at you. <laughs> um. I can tell that you don't. Yeah, no, I, I'm not an art school kid. I've got a clean... I, I'm not an art school kid. Uh, I've got a clean cut haircut. I wear shirts. I'm not an art school kid. I don't have a septum piercing. That's fair. You don't have any piercings. I don't have any piercings. That I've seen. Or tattoo. I mean... That you've seen. I, I want to get a tattoo. Do you want to get a tattoo? I want a tattoo I could have for a year. Okay. I don't know. Or maybe not... I don't know. I, I think it would be really cool to act in a TV show where my body was just completely tatted up. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think I could ever... Have. You don't want you don't want permanent tattoos. Yeah. So you don't want a tattoo. No. And I like I, So I would be fine with having a, a sleeve for a week. But you could I just, just wear one of those tattoo sleeves that they sell at Hot Topic. It always looks stupid. Yeah. They I'm do. sorry. If you're listening and you're wearing a tattoo sleeve... One, what are you doing? Yeah, take Two, it off. I'm sorry, I guess. Don't be sorry. Yeah, you know you what? I'm not sorry. Let's take it off. Quit pretending. Stop. You, you want it, You want tattoos? Get, get tattoos. a real tattoo. Get something that matters to you, though. Don't get something you're going to regret. Or years. not, because sometimes, you know, there's this guy that I saw who had a tattoo of a chair, and mm-hmm. it was because he wanted to make sure that he didn't take himself too seriously. And I thought, hey, you know, that's a good idea. That's an interesting philosophy. Yeah, but I mean, not I, would ne- one, I would never do that. Not one that I'd paint on my skin for the no. rest of my life. No, not at all. But an interesting philosophy to listen to. Yeah. It's 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 not for me. Um, no, I, are you would, are you going to ever get... You, you, you talked about having a tattoo. And I continue to talk about having a tattoo, actually. Yeah. I, I have remained the same, wanting the, the same tattoo since the beginning of freshman year of college. Mm-hmm. And I I think, and it's been, I mean, not to date myself here, but it's been almost two years since I devised the idea of getting this particular tattoo Yeah, in the style and, and look that it portrays. Yeah. Right? And I think it's a great tattoo. I think it looks good. Uh, I think it, it is meaningful to me in a certain way that, that... When you explained it to me, I thought... That sounds stupid. Mm-hmm. But then you showed me what you were kind of thinking of, like yeah. picture form, and I thought that's actually pretty cool. Right. It, it's got a a cool. It's got a masculine aesthetic design, and it also has a a powerful and deep meaning to me personally. And I think every every one of those things is what I look for in a TV. And when I, by the way, at the outset of the show, when I said it's a dark and stormy night, I mean it is. It's coming down out there. It so is pouring. I, I apologize. Cats and dogs are barking and meowing against our window right now as we speak. So I apologize if that interferes with your podcast listening experience. It I think it'll make it better. It'll make it nice and soothing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're listening to this as you go to bed, it'll lull you right to sleep. 
do people always like those noises? Because I've met many people who do, but is there anybody who just doesn't like rain noises? I mean, a lot of people find it scary, you know? Mm -hmm. They're they're terrified of, of what might happen as a result of, of Dogs, extreme weather. Especially, especially. Excuse me, my lord. <laughs> that came from the deep depths of the my body. deep depths. I could not help that. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, thunder. Thunder is a thing that terrifies some people and and gets to the root of, of your psyche, right? But when you're talking about, when you're talking about just rain, just a, a nice, steady pitter-patter of rain on the window, that's enough for a lullaby for me, man. I thought you were talking about, like, a, a king's reign. Yeah, I mean, that too. That's nice. That, I'm, that's, that makes me lull to sleep. If I haven't expressed it already, I'm against monarchies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I'm not a huge fan. I like the UK. We, we, we're just going to repeat ourselves, talking about how we, we love the UK. And I've been to Spain, but Spain is rife with social and economic problems. I'm, I'm good living here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm liking our governmental setup mm -hmm. right now, because it, it can change. And it's That's right. And, and you and I, as, as full adult citizens with voting rights, have the ability to change our government with just the power of the pen. And I, the pen and the power of the voice. Power of the boat. And the power of the vote. And the power of the box. And the power of assembly. Yeah, that's part of it. You have a school assembly. That's, that's, what, that's what makes that's this, what we're the fight. rules work. That's what we're fighting for. Did you know that people, that, that government funding to elementary and middle schools, high schools, just public schools in general... Federal funding is contingent upon the fact that your school features the Pledge of Allegiance on a daily basis. That's kind of scary. Yeah. And, and I, I've kind of thought about that as, as uh, an overarching reign. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, I, I have no problem with the Pledge of Allegiance. I believe in it Oh, yeah, fully. for sure. It's, it's a good thing. I, I do pledge allegiance to the flag. And, and the people who inhabit our, our great democracy, mm -hmm. uh, our great republic, yeah. as it were. And, and you know, it, it, I think it's a powerful message. But at the same time, if I was living in a government system that I believed was oppressive, that I believed was taking over my rights, and I was forced on a daily basis to stand, put my hand over my heart, and pledge allegiance to that government... I would be angry. And so I don't think that the it's force... It's like uh, North Korea. Exactly. It is exactly like Not a big like fan North of Korea. North Korea. No, a lot, of people, uh, a lot of people have criticisms of North Korea. If you're a North Korean listener... Uh, you're not. You're not. Yeah, you're definitely you're not. You're definitely not. Uh, please, please look at a map. You're not from North Korea. Definitely not. And, and North Korea... Did you know they've got this, this radio in every household in North Korea that you cannot turn off? It's actually illegal to, to disable or turn off this radio. You can turn it down, you can adjust the volume, but you cannot turn it off. Well, and that, how do they know? Hmm? Do they know if you turn it off? Um, I'm sure there are regular police checks or something. I, I, yeah. I can't back up what, what their system they is for enforcing They don't have any individual liberties. What I know is it's illegal to turn off this radio. And you have to listen if the if the the leader is making a statement, I really hope that's where Kim Jong Un drops his mixtapes. Yeah. He's oh, I'm like, sure. Listen, listen to my new mixtape. Yo, listen up. Here's a story about a little no, guy who's not, got a terrible no, sh haircut. Stop. Stop. That's not a song that you should be singing. One because uh, you're doing it in this in the style of Kim Jong Un. And two, it's not a song that you should be singing. No, well, it's One, a it's, good song. It's it's out of date. Have you ever seen the music video for that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's a gift to humanity. No. It's phenomenal. Incorrect. It is so good. I am in disagreement with you. It is. It is. It's one of those things where you watch and you you just think, is this? Are they serious? Yeah. Do they? They mean to do this? I mean, this is this is what they they paid money for this. 
They wrote a song, and they made this music video, and this is what came out? Yeah. It's like that Kanye music video we watched the other yeah. night. Uh, With what's what her name called? on her? What's it called? Something 2? Bound? Bound? Bound 2. Bound 2? Yeah. Yeah. If you've ever seen the music video for Bound 2... How, how, how white was that moment right there? That was pretty for white. For just a moment. Uh, Bound 2. What do they call that song? Yeah. It, 2? Something 2. If you've ever seen that music video... Mm. Uh, and you haven't heard of the reenactment, shot for shot reenactment that James Franco and Seth Rogen did. It's oh. pretty great. Comedy gold. Yeah. At its finest and highest level. I would I would argue that the shot for shot remake is better than the original video. I would not argue with that argument. Yeah. <laughs> I would not. Um I mean, I, I'm a fan of Kanye. I think he makes a lot of good content. That was can, not one of them. No. No. That was wasn't. absolutely far from the best thing Kanye has ever yeah. released. It, it was... I'm gonna let you finish, Kanye, but it's I, not... I would venture to music. say that that was a mistake. <laughs> and it, it's an example of where music just... But you know what? Mm. Uh, it's kind of like Drake mm -hmm. with Hotline Bling. Mm -hmm. He made that music video, and his music sales for Hotline Bling, which was his lowest selling song, I believe. This is all speculation. I was told this by a trusted friend of mine by the name of Ross. So I oh, will, Ross is trust. I will believe. But okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Ross is the type of per he is a genius, and he is the type of person that. He can say anything, and I will believe it, 100%. Sometimes messes with other people because he knows that he has that effect on a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And so he'll just say the most outrageous things, and people will not see through his dry humor they and take it at face value. Oh, absolutely. He, 100%. He, he has convinced many people of fake news throughout mm -hmm. his days, just because... And, and he, he knows he's making a joke, but nobody else can tell. Mm -hmm. Because he's got this, this straight-faced yeah. way about making yeah, a yeah, joke. Yeah, he does. And uh, anyway, so yeah, he told me, he, he told me all this, um, so I didn't read this from a specific source. But uh, he said that, yeah, Hotline Bling was one of the lowest-selling songs on um, Drake's album. And when he made Hotline Bling, the sales skyrocketed for that song. Because yeah. it was such a memeable a memeable music video. Memeable. If you don't know what memeable is, uh, parents, um, look it up. Uh, your your kids do, or ask your ask your kids. Get on the YouTube's. Look up meme compilations. Or don't. Yeah, probably don't. That that doesn't seem like a fun video to watch. No. Especially if you're an aged person. Yeah, you probably wouldn't get it. We're not gonna be in on it. Cause I know there's a lot of things that even I will look back and some things, some comedy that children, uh, Generation Z is consuming, I don't get it. No, absolutely not. I just don't get it. It's, and I'm sorry. I wish I did, but I don't. It's a mystery to, the, to all of us. Mm -hmm. For sure. Even my sister sometimes doesn't get my comedy. And she's not that much older she's than us. She's not that much she's older She's like four me. years older mm -hmm. than us. Yeah. So, somewhere around that range. Yeah. God, your sister. She will send me pet videos. That's her kind of comedy. Yeah. You know? Which, yeah, pet videos can be funny, but at the <laughs> same time, it's not like every single dog doing a little weird thing is going to make me laugh. Have you ever seen compilations of cats versus cucumbers? Yes. Oh I my have. gosh. If you haven't had the opportunity, what's out the science there, of, of that again? I think they have an instinct to believe it is a, a snake? snake. Yeah, okay. That's and right. And they're deathly afraid of snakes, as one should be, mm -hmm. right? And that's that's a rational fear because I'm snakes a, are. I know uh, Indiana Jones is afraid of snakes, and he's a tough guy. He's a, he is a tough guy. He's but, a pretty cool guy. But snakes can kill you. Mm -hmm. And why has it always got to be snakes? They uh, they can they have sharp fangs. But, I've heard. But what they'll do is they'll they'll place a cucumber behind a cat while they're eating. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll turn around and they'll jump six feet into the air. Yeah. Maybe, oh yeah, maybe not six feet, but they'll they'll, they'll jump quite they'll get a ways. Some, some serious air, yeah, and and scurry away. And it's funny. Oh yeah, 
but it's kind of it would be scary for the cat. Their heart is probably in their throat. I would do that to my cat, but I I don't want to kill it. Yeah, because my cat I I have an aging cat. You got to do it to a young and agile cat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so somebody who can take that joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And go ah funny. Funny, funny guy. joke, guys. Meow. I yeah. I really appreciate that joke. Meow. That's how cats talk. And then they'll go sulk in their in their litter box, yeah. like cats. So I'm gonna do. go to my kid, my kitty litter box. Meow. Kitty litter boxes are, they smell so bad when they poop. Well, yeah, but but it's it's a necessary evil, right? I mean, you you allow your cats to roam well, free. Why don't you have a dog that goes out and and just takes a crap outside? Because dogs will will do that. But not where they're supposed to. Not all the no, no, not not if you train them correctly. No, not if you train them correctly. But but I have had dogs in the past that have been absolutely poorly trained. And if you don't give enough attention, and you have to give a lot of attention to a dog in order for it to appreciate you. Mm -hmm. You know that a dog, a cat's not so much of a commitment. You know, you get a cat, and it it it. it is mostly a different. I just to don't. You. I just don't think you've had the same experiences with dogs as I have. No, I've had good experiences with your dogs. dogs. I mean, I've yeah, had, I've I mean, got your good dogs, dogs are good, but I I think that they are different. Oh, well, they're absolutely stereotypically different. than most dogs. They're small dogs. Yeah, they're small dogs. And there's nothing wrong with a small dog. I like a small dog. I prefer large dogs. I, you know, they're, they're, I, I actually prefer small dogs because a large dog just, it, it has a lot of destructive power. It has, it has the, the ability to really, really mess things up and yeah. And that's why you're on its side. No. That's why it's on your side. No, a, a dog you just is. just have him sick him. I'm, I'm. You ever got a burglar? You just say sick him. Sick that, him, boy. That's sick not him, a thing. Bruce. That's why you buy a sick gun. Sick him, Spike. A dog's not going to really do that unless you've got a very aggressive dog, right? A dog's going to bark at somebody, but it's not going to to truly attack someone unless you've got a, a real attack dog, right? Somebody, Something you've actually trained to go for the throat. You know, you're not going to get results from, from a, a golden retriever that you haven't trained to, to truly take somebody out if, they're, if they feel threatened. And even if they don't feel threatened, you know, there's a dog, I mean, they're just going to bark at them. And Not if you tell them to stop. Well, yeah, of course, you, you tell them to stop, and then they bark for another five minutes mm -hmm. as you tell them not to stop. If, not if you train them right. That's, train uh, that's, them right. Actually, that's absolutely not true. Dude. Even if you train a dog correctly, they will, they will bark far more than you want them to. Well, more than you want them to, but, I mean... You can definitely... It's not five minutes. They will bark for an extended period of time at somebody, even if you tell them to stop. All right. That's a real thing. I'll, I'll agree to disagree with you. I've had a lot of dogs over, I, over the course. I'm just... I, I'm a... Yeah. I've had a diverse range of dogs. I'm a lover of big dogs. I, I, I like a big dog, but, but when you've got a big dog, they are always much larger than they feel that they are. They feel like they're always lap dogs. They, they want to come and, and be with you. They don't realize their size and they will knock things over. They will, they will, you know, it, it, it's a destructive power. And I'm, I'm not saying anything against dogs, right? I, I've been hunting with very well-trained dogs. Dogs are not a sponsor on uh, Idiots with Opinions. No, uh, but 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 I've been hunting with with really well-trained dogs, right? And and you'll shoot a pheasant, and the dog is trained to immediately go after that pheasant, mm -hmm. find it, bring it back to you, yeah, release it, and and that that is that is a phenomenal experience. I mean, you know, if you don't believe in hunting, whatever. But if you do, and you've had that experience. It's a great time to have a dog. You know, that, that is when you feel very well connected to a dog. And that's when I, I feel a dog is very, very well done. But when you have a cat... and, and a dog is well done. Yeah, it's well done. It's a well-trained, well-bred, well... -trained, well, -bred, well 
oriented dog. It knows what it's doing. Yeah. It's got a job. No, I know what you mean. And and, and and it feels happy doing that job. You know, it, it's a it's a dog that has has proven itself. And it feels like it's it's really coming through for you. And when all of those things, you know, it goes into the bushes, it flushes out the pheasant, the pheasant flies up into the air, you shoot it, it dies, the dog goes and gets it and brings it to you. That entire sequence of events, once it's done, is the most satisfying thing in the world. But, in defense of cats, and I'm not saying I'm necessarily a cat person or a dog person, I love them both equally. You know, I've got two dogs and I've got a cat, and I, I, I love them all. They're all great animals. But a cat's love you have to earn. A cat doesn't love you for being you. And a dog, as I heard once somewhere else, I can't remember where I heard this, a dog will love a bag of potatoes with your t-shirt on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, its love is not, un- its love is unconditional and omnipresent. It will give love to anybody who gives love to it. But a cat takes time and relationship and, and they are needy and they have mood swings and you have to understand a cat. You have to, you have to tend to it and take care of it and love it for an extended period of time for that cat to finally appreciate you and come to you and, and love you back. That, that I feel... Once you've worked to earn that love as a domestic pet, right? Because when you're when you're using a dog as a tool, which is your argument, right? You, you've got a guard dog or you've got a hunting dog. You're you're using that dog, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but you're you're having that dog do a job. When you've got a cat, it is a, a domestic pet, and it, it's like a roommate. And you have to you have to learn to work with that cat, and you have to learn who that cat is. It's got personality, it's got style, and you've got to you've got to learn who that cat is and appeal to it. And and once you earn that cat love, that's when you know you've made it. Well, yeah, I don't know. I just your your cat is different. Your cat is different than a lot of cats. I got a good cat. You do have a good cat. And and that I that might come from nurture. It might come from nature. Who knows? I I I mean every case study is different. So you can't you can't really pinpoint where a cat is on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I do want to move on. There is we are, you know, about a little a little under halfway. Yeah, or, so so we should probably start talking about our, our stories. Oh yeah, well, I mean, because uh, we haven't even talked about um, we haven't even talked about talking about about our talking stories. about our stories. Yeah, no. So if if you're if you haven't listened to our to our show before, probably haven't. No. Um, we're new here. This is we're this is new man. for us, uh, and we're we're here. Uh, usually the the setup of our show is that we're going to be talking about uh, a story, a new story. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've picked out a story mm-hmm. and Tuscan's picked out a story, uh, and I, you know, and we're going to tell it to each other and, and I don't know Tuscan's story. Yeah. We don't know each other's stories. Yeah. And, and we're going to be discovering them along with you. Yeah. So, uh, so it, it'll be, it'll be a, a, a fun time yeah. for, for everyone. Nice really. little delve into the, into the world unknown of human nature. Yes. So why, why, why don't you start us off, Todd? Okay. Uh, so basically, my story today is about a German man uh, who has been, you know, he's, he's, he's done with the, uh, the transportation. Yeah. You know, he's done with driving to work. You ever uh, know someone or, or be yourself someone who just really gets irked at all the, the traffic? Mm-hmm. I've never really been one to get mad at traffic. Oh, I have. I know you have. I'm a road uh, you rager. Are a, no, not only are you a road rager, you are a backseat road rager. Oh, yeah. There's backseat drivers. Yeah. And I have driven with you where you have reached over and honked the horn for me. Yes, I have. This is a true fact. People deserve it, man. No, they don't. Like, yes, it was they do. Fi- this person, the reason why you honked was because somebody was just taking too long to change lanes and they were like, you know, uh, quite a ways in front of me. Pick a lane, a-hole. Yeah, well, see, that's, that's just the do. difference between Tuscan and me. 
anyway, I you know I have the philosophy that uh, I, I'm a I'm a fan of just sitting in the car. I like driving. No, I do too. But but when you're when you're behind the wheel, you're operating a very dangerous vehicle, right? A lot of people die behind the wheel. This is true. And you have to you have to understand responsibility. You have to understand what you're doing when you're behind the wheel. It's a very it's a very sensitive sort of thing. Yeah. So so when when somebody screws up, you let them know. All right, pay the heck attention. I don't have as much aggression as you do. You're 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 a pretty aggressive driver. That's, either way, that's right. I mean, I you are aggressive. I I I will not deny that. Um, but I okay. So you know, I I like I like sitting in the car. Even if it's just all backed up, you say, I, like, for the sake of this story, um, if it's just traffic where you're not even going anywhere, I don't really see that's a problem unless you're really, you know, late for something, which yeah. I tend to plan ahead uh, punctuality-wise, unless, uh, unless I'm at home, because my parents, they have this habit of uh, whenever I am about to leave my, my house... To go do something, especially if I'm in about about to do something with Tuscan here, they will talk to me for 20 minutes, um, and it's just very hard to leave. Anyway, so unless you're like running late, traffic doesn't really bother me. But for this German man, it did, and so he got so upset with it that he decided he was going to start swimming to work because mm. it it took less time for him to swim to work than it did to drive to work. So. Uh, he he now you know instead of driving he would pack up his his laptop and his clothes into a waterproof bag mm-hmm. uh, jump into the lake or the river or wherever it was I think it was a river yep yes it was a river the river I saw mm-hmm I and see. so uh, he would kind of you know follow the current and uh, it would it would push him along as he swam to his to his job. And he'd get out, he'd go to his job, he'd change clothes, and, you know, he'd be ready for the day. So I think that's pretty interesting. I think that's, that's, uh, that's pretty cool for someone yeah. to do. And it's, it's healthy. It's healthy, Absolutely. Too. It's way, way healthier than Keeps driving, you in shape. driving to work. He looks like a portly man from what I'm seeing, but I, I would imagine... That's, oh, okay. that's him. That's, that's who he is. He, he looks so, he's got a dad bod. Yeah, he's got a sure. dad bod. For sure. But, uh, you know, I bet he's losing weight doing that. I'm sure. Sure, he's gonna be ripped in no time. I would imagine, yeah. I. That's great. I should good for swim. him. I used to swim. I I dated a girl who, one one time she she, she Ooh, her dad. Good for you. Yeah, I know. I've been in a relationship, believe it or not. Wow. Um, but her dad would bike to work. Last one. And it it would take him, it would take him like hours to get there. I mean, he was a serious biker. He would bike several miles to work but you know he 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 got on his bike every morning and he would pack an additional set of clothes and in the summer it would make him very sweaty and he'd get to work he'd dust himself off he'd get himself into a a full suit and tie and he'd go to work have you ever thought about mountain biking i have but i've only thought not done i would love to mountain bike yeah i'm Um, sure it's a great time yeah, going up the hill, the mountain is not would not be a good time. Coming down would be so fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just like after you've worked so hard to get to a certain point, you can just kind of coast all the way down, and it, it'd be so peaceful. Well, unless you're on one of those crazy mountain bike trails with Ooh, the yeah, banked true. curves. Yeah. Those look like so much fun. They do. I mean, if you know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah. If you, you don't, then it doesn't look fun. Because I mean, you, you would fall and hit every single tree. You've got to have a crazy spatial awareness for that sort of thing. You, yeah. You've got to be able to react to thousands of variables going on around you. You've got rocks. You've got obstacles in your way. You've got trees. You've got small critters. Uh, critters, yes. I mean, you might have bats flying into your face. I was talking to this guy the other day, uh, and he said that there's a race... I'm not for sure what this is called. It's a race not in this country, and it is it has something to do with uh, Monster Energy because this guy worked for Monster Energy, mm-hmm. and uh, this race is so dangerous that around two people die from the race every year. It's so um, fast and aggressive 
Uh, and it's just, I think it's just ma- m- uh, motorbikes. Motorbikes so would that's, be fun. Yeah, but dying would not be fun. I want to get a motorcycle. And not, it, it would be a city commuter. I'm not about to take it on a highway, go at high speeds. I don't need a speed bike that I need to zip between traffic. I just want something that is a nice, powerful machine. Do you want one of those really high handlebar uh, boss hogs? That's a chopper, baby. You want a chopper? I do not want a chopper. I I, I want to see you with the with the chopper. I'm not I'm not tall enough for a chopper. You gotta have long arms to pull off a chopper, and I'm I'm just not built or tall enough either to pull off a chopper. I want I want myself an Indian Scout, not a sponsor. What What about a chipper? You could it's just a small chopper. That sounds like a uh, a, a, a lawnmower. Yeah. I could, I've, you, I've ridden you, a lawnmower. Have you ever ridden a lawnmower? Is you should just get a lawnmower and then I have a lawnmower. And but, then drive it, and and when you come back from from work or wherever, you can just lo- mow your lawn. Have you ever ridden on a riding lawnmower? I have never ridden oh. on a riding lawnmower. I will I've tell only you, only done a push mow lawnmower. I have a, a large backyard, and. My we we bought a riding lawnmower when we moved into this house. Right, mm-hmm. we used to have a small backyard, and and we'd push the lawnmower around. And from a young age, my dad taught me how to how to start the mower and to mow because he would always say, "Well, that's why you have kids, you know, to to, to do, do the work for do you." Do the work for you. And yeah, that's the only reason why I'm doing it for for child labor. My yeah, that that was my my dad's only argument. I mean, he would have my brother and I. Scoop, scoop the driveway in the winter. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, I had sons for a reason, right? <laughs> and uh, he, he would have us, yeah, I mean, we, we would do all that work. But I, I remember the first time I, I learned how to drive the riding lawnmower. I was probably 12, mm-hmm. you know, far too young to drive. But that was the most autonomy I've ever had over a large machine. And you could get behind the wheel of this thing and you had all this power and you could drive along and mow the grass, and it was—it's it, it, such a soothing and therapeutic movement. You know, you go along, you're making these clean lines, you're focused on what you're doing, but at the same time, you can let your mind wander. You know, I—I I used to like to listen to podcasts and and different sorts of things while I was doing it. As long as you don't run over any critters. Yeah, yeah, I never did. That you know of? No, not that I know of. Yeah, absolutely. But but it's fun. You know, it's 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 soothing. It's uh, it's. I like it is therapeutic. I think a lot of people like the smell of fresh cut grass too. A lot of people do. It's uh, yeah, it's a good smell. It, it reminds one of summer. Yeah. And 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 the freshness of of the wilderness. I don't know why it smells fresh, but yeah, it smells fresh. It does. It, it's mm. got this this grown plant. It's just it, it it's got an aroma unlike anything else. I mean, you can't replicate it. You know what else might have an aroma? What? Well, I'm going to tell you, Todd, and it has to do with my story. And this story comes out of Russia. Hmm. Germany and, and Russia. That's a, you know, hey. They're close together. They are. They were they're, enemies at one point, and now they're they're not friends. They're not friends. <laughs> they're, they, they never really have been no. friends. <laughs> um, but the Russians, the Russians are always up to some weird stuff. And... You know, if that's a controversial statement, you can go and suck it because <laughs> the Russians they they're, they're up to some they're up to some shady things. They're up to sometimes. no good at all times. I mean, they might be up to, there's you can't generalize an entire huge country. That's I also probably the biggest country, yeah, the largest land landwise uh, country mm-hmm. ever. I also dated a Russian. Yeah. That was a that was a low point in my life. Uh, particularly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, but I'm not going to get into that. But there are, there are Russians out there. They're up to... Not north. that every Russian is like that. No. Absolutely not. I've met good Russians. But <laughs> my current roommate is a Russian. I don't Goodness like him. Tuscan. I have an ex-girlfriend that is a Russian. I, I don't much care for her. Um, I don't much care for the entire country of Russia. So... My entire experience with Russian people has been poor, and and I've loved. I you know I, I have nothing against the Russians. I I, I don't I don't. It hold, sounds like you do. 
I don't hold a true prejudice, but I, I, I'd love to meet a Russian that changes my mind on that. Okay. It would make me happy. All right. Because I don't like to generalize. I don't like my entire experience with a culture of people to be bad. Yeah. You know, but and, on that note, but, uh, everyone in Russia is bad and up to no good at all I'm times. just saying. Dude, <laughs> I, I've had experiences with two Russians, and neither of them have ended well. All right, well. Um, so, this story comes out of Russia. It's particularly in, in eastern and southern Russia. So, nowhere near Germany at all. And uh, this, this happened near the Chinese border. And a man was out near a river one day. And he found himself a a human hand sticking, excuse me, sticking out of the snow. And upon further investigation, he discovered a bag full of 54 severed human hands. That's 27 pairs, <laughs> for those of you doing the math at home. <laughs> and he... He could not figure out where they were from. And the Russian government says, oh, that was just trash. What? That was just discarded. Yeah, don't worry about that. They literally, they, they actually said that. They were like, well, they were probably coming from cadavers at a university somewhere, or uh, they were probably Oh, seven. so you're not saying that the Russian government took credit for it and said, oh, yeah, that's just our trash. No, they, they we're weren't shady. like, this is, our, this is our discarded hand stash. Right, they they were like, oh, somebody probably just threw that away, mm-hmm. and uh, offhandedly, according to the Russian government and the Russian publication from which this story originates, uh, there is no evidence for criminal activity here. It is either the source of medical students using human cadavers at a university, discarding human hands improperly, or it is the result of thieves whose hands were cut off as a punishment for their crime and their hands being discarded improperly. Now, these these hands are supposed to be discarded uh, in an incinerator, right? Cremated and the ashes disposed of properly. But in the case of this Russian man, they, they were floated down a river and discovered in a snowbank somewhere in Russia. Too bad you didn't find the person who's supposed to throw them, uh, throw them away and catch them red-handed. Yeah, uh, let's see what you did there. Yeah, I really tried for that yeah, one. Yeah, that was a. I, you were you were silent for a while. I could see that. Yeah, I, it, I could the, see it was gears, working. It was working I in my head. I could see the gears turning there. <laughs> yeah, that was a. That was one of them. That was one handy joke. Hey, don't get handsy with me. I won't. <laughs> I can see you doing it right now. I'm not even close to touching you. Yeah, well. I beg to differ. All right. All over. There's me. no proof. That's the difficulty of an audio-only podcast. Yeah, exactly. It's no one can podcast. see. Podcast. Podcast. Uh, thank you. Our podcast is brought to you by Hands today. Hands all over you. Today's show is brought to you by the letter E. All right. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's also something that we're brought to you by. Not a, not actually a sponsor. We're not sponsored by the letter E. Uh, yeah, the we'll letter E, uh, definitely not giving us any money. Definitely but, you know, not giving us any money. If there's a foundation that represents the letter E, I would love to take the money. Yeah. I will do an we can, ad we, spot. We can definitely do an ad spot for E. I am an advertising major. I will definitely put together a phenomenal advertisement for the letter E. Mm-hmm. If and you want to give me the money for it. Mm-hmm. If not, screw the letter E. I don't want it in my house. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's all that's I have to say about it. That's a wonderful way to, you know, ask for a, a, an E ad. Well, you know, E entertainment. But you got to go big or go home. Go big or go home. EA Sports? It's in the game. Yeah. That was the saying, right? Yeah, I don't know. Probably. I may, I, I used to play Madden 2004. My, my grandma got me a GameCube when I was a young child. That was my first gaming system was a GameCube. And uh, I remember I had Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the GameCube game. I had Madden 2004. I had Tiger Woods PGA Golf 2004. And there was one other game that I got that same Christmas. But they, they were all... They were all games. I, I still have Madden 2004. The rest of the game's gone. Good for you. Can't account for them. Yeah, Nintendo GameCube. Not a sponsor. 
Uh, also not a sponsor. Yeah. GameCube is not a sponsor of uh, Idiots with Opinions. In order to cover all our bases, neither no, is EA. No one sports. is sponsoring us. Uh, uh, incorrect. There is well, one person, and he's a, an amazing person. We're going to save that one for later. But we'll talk about him later. No, there are no corporations sponsoring us. There are no brand names that I'm going to throw out throughout the course of this podcast. I do want to say one thing. Uh, hands. So is it really still a thing that... Um, you know, thieves in Russia will get their hands cut off? I mean, anything's possible in Russia. You know, up until about 30 years ago, people were still thrown into gulags for crimes they would committed, however small the crime. I mean, there, there was a time my dad was in Russia and he saw a man exchanging a U.S. dollar for a good on the black market. And immediately, KGB agents hopped out of the bushes tackled this man, and dragged him away to the gulag. I mean, this, this is not scary. a made-up story. My dad went to Russia in, in, like, 1990, right? Right before the Berlin Wall fell, or right after the Berlin Wall fell. It might have been 91. I can't attest for this. This was before I was born. But it, it, was, a, it was a harrowing experience to see a, a place that was so corrupt and, and so lost in it in an old world sort of mentality i mean russia it, it was a it was, it's a dark place it yeah. always has been i'm i'm good staying here in america if i haven't mentioned it before i am a fan of america it's great. Um, and and i i'm good living here my right. left sock is an american flag sock yeah my right sock is Boba you're, Fett. Yeah, you're one of those one of those people who mismatches socks. I do it on purpose. I like mismatching my socks. I think it is a, a noble quest. Yeah, you have to be a bold man to mismatch your socks on purpose. Not necessarily. Oh yeah. I think you do. You you have to be daring enough to, to be able to back it up with your own confidence, right? I guess. Yeah, that, I'll give you that. That's a good point. Yeah, and you got to be confident in your in your mismatches. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, got to be confident in everything. Somebody looks at you and they say, "Hey, you're wearing an argyle sock and one with a Van Gogh painting on the other foot. What's up with that?" And you have to look them straight in the eyes and say, "Yeah, I mismatch my socks. What of it? What are you gonna do about it?" Yeah, I don't like to wear a hole in one sock and have to throw out the pair. Because yeah. I got a perfectly good sock on the other that's, foot. That's a very good point. And that's exactly the reason I started doing it. I, I had these nice, vibrant, colorful socks. And I would wear a hole in one of them. And I'd have to throw out the entire pair. I don't want to do that. No. You know, I've got, like I said, I got a perfectly good sock going on the other side. So why not just wear it with a mismatched sock? Who's looking at your socks? I mean, I, unless you, I like wearing socks that I that I have holes in because uh, then they're holy socks. Unless you're wearing a sock that, unless you're wearing socks with your Crocs or socks with your uh, sandals. Yeah, your sandals, uh, your your Burks, right? Uh, you you're not gonna you're not gonna have anybody taking a gander at your socks. Well, I I don't know. People people will look at my socks from time to time. Well, yeah. I have I, I think I like I I like my socks. I I like to have some interesting looking socks. And I like to roll up my my pants just in order to show off my socks cuz I got good socks. Right? My sock game is Sock game strong. Sock game strong, man. Rock 'em sock 'em. Oh yeah. I got Stick the Rock 'em the sock 'em robots on one pair of the socks. Yeah, you do. That I you got. Do. Yeah. They're they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. One side's blue, one side's red. They were mismatched as a pair. Hands and feet. Yep. That's the theme of today's show. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. If you've got a fetish for either, bring it on down. Or, th- th- why? D- why? I mean, you know. Okay. We gotta be all inclusive. I guess. There are people out there with all sorts of tastes. Yeah. Yeah. I got a taste for all sorts of meats. Meats? Yeah, like red meat, white meat. Okay. Yeah. I like the umami flavor in my umami. foods. Umami. What is it? What is exactly is umami again? It's just savory. Yeah, savory. I don't understand how that's different from from, from certain foods. Well, it, it's just a, a sour. Because no- there's sour, sweet, bitter. What? Umami. Umami. What else? It's not four. Sour, sweet. Gone. Bitter. Yes, sour sweet gone, sour patch kids. Those are the only flavors that your tongue can understand. Yeah. 
There's there's a fifth one. I know you're right, but yeah. I can't think of it at the, at the present. And that's moment. exactly why this show is called Idiots with Opinions. Yeah, because we don't know all the facts. We've got computers here to look them up, but but we're not going to use them. Yeah, they're, they're, Why would we do that? They're like an arm's length away. I'd have yeah, to lift my I'd arms. Have to, yeah, we're we're millennials. Yeah. we don't do that. That's a, that's a hard task. Yeah, man. you we have just, no idea. We just read headlines and look at our twitters, mm-hmm. Twitter tweets, tweet. Yeah, and tweet that's, at us. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, don't. You I can don't. you can email us though. Yeah, uh, at idioticopinions at gmail dot com. Email your questions and your comments, and and you know, we'll get back to you uh, in a in a blink and a wink. I, I can't guarantee that, I, but I will I, guarantee that we will get back to you. I will say that a blink and a wink uh, depends on how long some people's blinks and winks are. And I will say that even if I need to hire an unpaid intern, I will get back to you. <laughs> That's what, you know, you should just get some kids for that. Yeah. Yeah. Hire some Child kids. labor. I've got a brother. Yeah, you do. He's got a pretty terrible job at a car wash right now. And... Oh, That's too bad. You could you can say, hey, quit better. that job, start doing this work for me, <laughs> and I'll pay you less. Last story I gotta tell. I, I, I don't even think I told you about this yet. My brother very recently got a job at Old Navy. Oh, yeah. No, I... I you okay. heard about this? Well, I think he was telling me something about this. I don't know exactly what you're going to say, but so, continue. When I was in high school, my senior year of high school, I worked for Banana Republic. Yeah. And if you're I unaware, Banana Republic is owned by Gap Incorporated, which also owns Old Navy. Yes. And when I went to college, the town that I moved to did not feature a Banana Republic. So I was trying to, rather than try to find a new job... In the, in the city I was moving to, I, I decided I would just keep the job that I already had. Right? It's easier than searching for work and negotiating pay and trying to learn an entire new trade and, and computer system. I thought, hey, why don't I just keep working at this same place? They got, a, they got an old Navy down there. I'll just go and work for the old Navy. Long story short, I spent a lot of time working to get to this old Navy. And as soon as I got there, I realized that I did not want to work for an old Navy. (laughs) And it was gross. It had way too many children for my taste. And not to say I don't like children, man, there were some weird kids there, man. I I, I gotta (laughs) tell you. And they they had they they sold food, which I was not aware of. They they've got like candy bars in the checkout aisle. They got drinks in the checkout aisle which were not featured at a Banana Republic. Um, and within two or three days of working at this old Navy, I went to my new boss and I said, hey, I can't do this anymore. I hate this job. This is the worst place I've ever worked. I gotta quit. I'm putting in my two weeks. And she's like, you know... Old Navy is uh, not a sponsor. Clearly. And they, I, she, she said, you know, you've worked for us for maybe three days. Uh... You, you don't need to put in your two weeks. Yeah. You, you can just go. Mm-hmm. And I said, sweet! And I left. That's exactly how you said it. That's exactly what I, I just, I bounced, I got out of there. So my brother recently got a job at Old Navy, started working at Old Navy, worked two or three shifts. Um, they decided not to schedule him for about two weeks. And he said, you know what? I just got a job at a car wash, so screw Old Navy. I'm not going to work there anymore. So, my brother and I have both collectively worked for Old Navy for a total of about five days. And that's as much as we're willing to get that's to that something, company. That's something to put on your resume. Oh, yeah. I, I bought one t-shirt while I was there with my discount. You know what else is uh, good to put on your resume? Uh, the name of Carl Westberg is a That's reference. exactly right. That's exactly right. Carl Westberg uh, is, a, is a wonderful man. Mm-hmm. Uh, he sponsors us here. He's... Actually, our only sponsor. Yep. Um, he has helped us through thick and thin, and he always he always gives us some good advice. Oh yeah. You know what's what's something he's told you? He told me to follow my dreams, never give up, because that's what a true walrus does. He grows his mustache like no other. He lets it reach the bottom of his tusks, and he lets it all out. 
That's exactly right. A walrus right. is not ashamed. A walrus is a walrus for the sake of being a walrus, and he doesn't apologize to nobody. That sounds like uh, something that he's said verbatim. So yeah. So I would, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're just going to thank Carl, Carl H. Westberg for, for helping us out. Yep. Um, and also, thank you. Thank the you. The listeners for listening. Yeah. If you uh, made it this far in the, in the thank podcast. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're a privileged individual. Yeah. And you got to learn a couple of things about hands. And Tuscan will give you uh, some money. I won't. He'll give you... <laughs> you have He'll no give you something. What my bank account looks like. But if you come up close to me... He'll give and you, you a ask, firm handshake. And you ask nicely, I'll give you a kiss. All right. Kiss I'm, on the cheek. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's as much as I'm going to promise. I'll I was going to list a few places, but I don't want to go anywhere else. I'll, I'll give, give a hug... A, I'll give a hug if you want. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give a hug by default, but if you ask nicely, I'll give you a kiss on the cheek. All right, cool. That is, that is, and, and Todd's excluded. He doesn't get a kiss on the cheek. I don't get a kiss on the cheek. No. But I'll, but I'll kiss, I'll kiss you on the cheek as well. Um, yeah. And on that note, uh, have a, have a merry night, have a wonderful week, have a wonderful year, have a wonderful, a wonderful life. If we life. never talk to you again, if this is the only if this episode, this is the last time that you ever you've said, "Oh wow, what a terrible waste of my time." They they offended me with all those anti-Russia comments. <laughs> all those anti-Russian comments. You probably turned it off halfway yeah. through, so we yeah. lost the Russians mm-hmm. long ago. No more Russians. We're we're slowly shaving down our audience. <laughs> However, if you're a Russian and you stuck it out to the end, thank you so much. We love you. Congrats very, very much. to you. You're a great person. And we'll is, talk to you. What does that mean? I think it's cheers. I think you're an idiot. You've been listening to Idiots with Opinions.